So hello everyone, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'll proceed assuming that you can until I hear otherwise. Um, so hello to everyone who's already here. Um, clearly this is a popular time, so maybe this will become uh, <laughs> my normal time. So uh, Francis, Sai, Kate, off to make a cuppa. Hope you've got your cuppa with you, Joss. Rusty, we've got all sorts, Cape Town, Netherlands, Texas, Washington, Chester, Birmingham. Hello everyone. Anyway, um, today, I guess the, the thumbnail said Inktober has started. Um, so I, it has, and I've been doing some ink sketching today. So you might have seen this come up as a YouTube video today. Um, and this was also on that YouTube video. That's just a nonsensical abstract thing I was doodling um, for a bit of b-roll um, and then I also been doing things like this which are just little sketches actually from the imagination just like getting back into some ink sketching but I've also been filming masses of ink stuff recently um, so I'm a little bit bored of just doing ink so I'm going to go back to normal today and do ink and watercolours um, and the extra bit of fun I'm having today is I've got some new brushes to try. So these are by Panart, um, made of densified wood. So they're softwood. Normally um, brushes are made of hardwood because softwood uh, absorbs water too much and that basically means as soon as you put them in the water they're going to start warping. Um, these are called densified wood. So in some way they've been injected and um, made harder and denser. Um, and the company Panart have really good, so I've not done the research myself, but they have um, really good green credentials in that they have um, ISO 14000, uh, which is similar to B Corp certification, if you know about these things. So in theory, they sh they've been vetted as being a really green company. And I just wanted to see these are synthetic, they're softwood instead of hardwood, which is more renewable, more green, sustainable. So... I'm hoping they're really good. I don't know where you can get them because I got them, the distributor sent them to me. Um, so I don't actually know if they're even on sale in the UK or not. They also look quite pretty. So there's always there's always looking pretty as a key thing. Um, the only other first thing I'd notice is this is a size 20, um, but it's not very big. Um, so I, I said I'd have a size 20, 12 and 6. Um, and I think they're quite small. This looks more like a 14-ish to me. Um, and then this is a size 20 flat which really is like a half inch flat. So they're not enormous, but fingers crossed, they work really well. I've, I've used them a little bit, we'll see. Um, also got Platinum 3776. There's a video coming up about this soon. Uh, it's a bit of a pricey pen um, with the justification that it's got an ultra extra fine nib. I really wanted to um, try something with a finer line. And this has definitely got a finer line. Um, than other things I've used before. Um, and I've also got a couple of new colours. So I'm going to try a little bit of Hematite Genuine, which is granulating, has a bit of fun. Um, so we'll see. It's one of the Pri Daniel Smith Primatex. I've got quite a few new colours as well to be trying over the next few weeks to see if I can uh, include them in my palette in some way. So we'll try this for shadows and things. And with that... So hello everyone, um, Lowe's Norfolk, hello. We were up in uh, Norfolk on holiday a couple of weeks ago. Lovely part of the world and very close to us as well. So hi Ed, Ed from uh, Norfolk. And Lowe's new people joining. Dean says, anyone else having picture quality issues? Um, there could be picture quality issues my end, but it looks good my end from what I can see. The other option is that your stream is... Uh, not in the highest quality so if you press the cog button you may be able to change it to higher quality and get that to work for you um and let's just get started oh last thing if you don't mind hit the uh, like button and hopefully that will draw in some new people to uh, come and be suckered into watching some sketching um and i guess my other little bit of uh, fun is I, re I released a really big class on Skillshare yesterday so if you fancy if you're on Skillshare go and check it out and if you fancy um, hearing more about Skillshare do send me a message be delighted to have people over there 
uh, the class is all about ink sketching. So uh, it was designed to be appropriate for Inktober. And with that, hello Madeline, um, hello Sue, hello Puppy Dude, um, hello Kate. I think that's the same Kate who was off to make a cuppa, so I, I hope you've got your cuppa. With that, I'm going to start. Now all of my um, technology is dead today. And my phone, my tablet, all out of battery. So I'm sketching off a reference about a metre off to my left on my computer screen. So forgive the uh, liberties which I imagine I'll be taking with perspective. And I'm also very sorry I haven't posted this reference um, for you guys to see, but I will pop a link to it later. Um, it is New Street in uh, St Neots. So it's uh, just a slightly different view actually of a street I often sketch. I've never ever sketched it looking south. So that's what I'm doing today, looking south. Um, and it, it's where one of the fun cafes, Art and Soul Cafe, is, which, which run lots of, um, well, as you can probably imagine, lots of art classes there. So quite a fun street, nice cafe. And I thought this is quite a nice view. So it, it's um, going to end up being a street going sort of swinging around that way. Got a couple of cars in the middle and then a couple of just straight on buildings off on the left here. And I will also try and answer any questions people come up with. I can see one. Let me just get this line in and then I'll try and answer that question. So, may, ooh, may I'm not going to be able to say, may, may I need? Try sketching a random, oh, your, your comment's gone off my screen. Bear with me. A random view and got overwhelmed with detail. What would you suggest to start with when you're a beginner? How to improve? I would suggest starting, there is something about just choosing scenes which feel okay for you. So number one, there are scenes which feel not okay for anyone. Um, you know, things like, for me, if I pick a, a scene filled with skyscrapers, then those windows in the skyscrapers are not going to get done. So it's, I know that i am not got the patience to actually uh, sketch them in a, a realistic or semi-realistic fashion. So I, I know to either avoid those scenes or do my own version of it. So that's the first. Um, the other thing is, well, uh, yeah, I mean, the other thing that links into that and is just basically get, get okay with simplifying. You can always unsimplify. Um, when you develop and when you feel comfortable to start adding in lots and lots of details and things. Um, but to start with, get comfortable with simplifying because, you know, all art starts with a very simple sketch, even if you're going to then build it up. Normally, if you're going to build it up, you'll start in pencil and then you'll be able to do a very loose, simple sketch in pencil. And then you might, if you're doing ink, you can add in ink on top sometimes and often people will just trace over their their pencil sketch and often people will um you know uh start well will develop their pencil sketch as well rather than just tracing over it so yeah that would be my tips for getting started and hi Joss says maybe show the picture i will show the picture soon my phone is just charging that's my normal way of showing the, the picture, unfortunately. Um, but in about five minutes, <laughs> when my phone's charged up enough, uh, I will show the picture. And again, sorry that I um, I didn't have my phone charged. I wasn't expecting it to die just before the, the stream. Otherwise, it would be up showing it to you. And there we go. So it's a bit of a complex one of all these roofs coming over. Perhaps I'm glad that the, uh, the picture's not being shown because then you can't see how inaccurate this is. But I think it might be okay. We'll see what happens, won't we? While I'm wittering away to my my own self, how are people planning or not planning to approach Inktober? I've I've not often managed to keep um, going for the whole month. Um, there's a lot of sketching to do if you do the whole month, but I wonder could be people out there manage to get the whole month done or planning to do the whole month this time any tips for people who like me haven't managed to do the whole month before It'd be very great to hear ah so madeline new to inktober so uh 
I guess I should start with that. And I just sort of, I suppose it's in my sphere, so I know about it. Um, Inktober it was, I guess, say, invented in 2009 by a, basically a, a chap who likes sketching with ink, who decided he wanted to do more ink sketching for a month and um, in doing so work on his um, ink sketching skills. And so just basically came up with a list of 30 prompts um, to sketch. And thus, you know, that's a, a little challenge, a little goal. And so the sketching happens and you hopefully improve. And the, the prompts tend to be quite um, open to interpretation. So for example, today's is um, a dream. That's what the, the prompt is. And you can find all the prompts basically on Instagram. They're always there. And I imagine they're on um, X, formerly known as Twitter, and all the other platforms as well. Uh, you can also find them on inktober.com. And then the idea is you keep up with doing every single one. In theory, that's the idea. Um, and in theory, your sketches should be all entirely ink, although I think it's fair to say um, mostly in ink. Because if you come and add like a Posca pen or something, you know, that's fine. And I, I imagine most people will sketch with pencil first and obviously that should be fine as well. Um, yeah, and it's it's just a way of expanding your horizons. You get It's quite challenging because a lot of the prompts are really not easy. They can be easy when you thought about it, but they're not easy to start with. Um, so I've, for people who weren't there at the beginning, I did a little video on today's, which is Dream. And for me, as someone who is comfortable sketching architecture, total nonsense abstract stuff, uh, landscapes, to some extent people, the idea of Dream, this wasn't actually that hard to sketch once I'd worked out how, what I was going to do. But actually getting to that point is quite hard sometimes. Um, some of them are easy. So uh, there's like map and castle and things like that later. So they're great. They're in my wheelhouse. But there's loads and loads of stuff which isn't. And then loads of other people also will post their own challenges. So the two that I'm really interested in and might dip in and out of will be uh, Doug. Doug Jackson artwork on Instagram. Um, he does Boattober. I think he's done it at least the last two years. Um, so he'll post up different boats every day for you to, to draw along with. And then Sketcher Joey does, is doing History Tober, which are, again, quite loose prompts, but um, a lot of them have a different feel and you can imagine sketching a lot of different teams. So they're just not as cognitively challenging to someone like me. Whereas the sketch, the uh, Inktober ones have a little bit of an indie feel often. So a bit more like unique or outside the box thinking, uh, which you might be more comfortable with if you're a kind of someone who does tattoo style art and things like that. There we go, that's most of my scene done. So let's see if my phone can show everyone the uh, alleged photo I'm working from. So we have 19% battery, so that should be good enough. Um, so the scene I'm working at trying to create is this one. So hopefully you can see the idea. This street, I've not really got the sloping away, have I at all? So I can correct some of that. And I made the excuse already that, there you go, battery's dying, that I was looking a long way to the left and my perspective would go wonky. And it is definitely a factor in you know, if you're trying to get an accurate sketch and you're stood in an uncomfortable position, it's going to be a lot harder. And I'm saying that just as a, a a thing for if you're outside, for example, it is worth trying to get yourself as comfy as possible with as good a view of your scene as possible um, before you start sketching. Because it just, it will be a bit demoralising sometimes if you're just trying really hard, but because you're constantly craning your neck and looking around, you can't, um, you can't do it. And here we go. Are you just, I've got a few questions I've missed because I was waffling for so long. Um, are you just imagining the angles of depth? I don't understand the question, sorry. That may just be me being rather dense. Um, so 
Uh, Jess, if you let me let me know uh, another way of the, uh, to ask that question, and I'll try and answer it for you. Sorry, I don't understand. I, I wonder if you're talking about these angles or something as we come across the scene. Lindy says, going to try and do the whole month, just quick five minute sketches. Yeah, I think that's a really good way of doing it is just um, doing your sketches really quickly. And then sometimes you might expand. But if you're not planning to do like perfect sketches every day, then it, it feels much more achievable. Here, little challenge is just making sure if we track across, are we getting the bottom of the street the same? Because that's going to be key to getting the perspective feeling right. And I, I can see I've got it about right. Otherwise the slope of the street, well, the street will feel like it's on a slope when it shouldn't. And you can see a few bits. It's much easier when your reference is like this. Suddenly you can immediately spot all these errors because you can flick your eyes up and down, up and down, up and down. So immediately I can see that this isn't big enough. This here isn't big enough. That I missed out these people, which I'd normally just added in straight away. Um, this actually worked out okay, but again, the angle's wrong. And the angle here is wrong, uh, which just makes me lose that flow of perspective. There's also some confusion actually, because this building must be smaller than these, because it's not actually taller than these buildings. So normally you'd expect these buildings closer to be way up your page, but they're not. Uh, it's a tiny bit up the page, which I've kind of got right. Um, but because it's must be a shorter building to not be a lot taller than these based on the perspective. I hope that makes sense. Thank you to the nice compliments for my mini sketch today. <laughs> I think Amber and uh, Madeline, very kind. I'll do my, um, I'm learning to, to say, please, uh, please hit the like button. If you're vaguely enjoying this, um, then please hit the like button. It will help more people come and hopefully also vaguely enjoy my ramblings. Um, or if you're not enjoying it, then you can hit the like button and then you'll trap more people here and they too can suffer. There we go. I think I'm in a dark mood. I've been listening to the new um, Robert Galbraith book, uh, which perhaps has me in a slightly sinister feeling mood. They're always a little bit creepy. Go on then, There's a, that's a fun question for the, the comments. I always just talk about art, but I do have a life outside that. What do, what do you guys do outside of um, exploring art on YouTube? So for me, it's uh, audiobooks, running. Um, recently started going to the gym again because I had a running injury and decided I was bored of getting running injuries for the last few years and maybe I should do some other kind of exercise. Um, and then the other one is the one that everyone knows about, which is my mad dog, which I consider somewhere between a job and a hobby, getting her... Um, she had a, a, sh a sheltered life. Um, she's a rescue, so getting her uh, stimulus control and things under control is a <laughs> feels like a full-time job at times. Oh. I've just realised as well, I want these windows in, I think they're important. And I'd again, something I'd missed when I was working off a reference a long way away. But I think we're probably almost reaching the end of stuff. I can't do too many corrections or it's going to get a bit mental in there. Um, so I, I think almost reaching the end of the kind of line part of this. And um, we can come back and make some things bolder. I'm going to leave this unfinished. I quite like having the distance unfinished. It makes sure it stays that back there in the background. Um, and she is three, three years and six months, Madeline. Um, she's been with us for six months of that time. Um, but she'd never been walked before. And she's a collie husky uh, who acts a lot like a collie. So to not really ever see the outside world she's very very clever and very aware of everything going on and very scared of everything that's going on which she's not seen before so um, she's a funny one but uh, starting to enjoy agility training and things like that 
So she's getting there. So I'm just doing some really simple hatching. With this, it's a very fine pen. So I said at the beginning, for people who weren't here, this is an ultra extra fine pen. Um, so it really is a lot finer um, than the extra fine nibs that I've been using. It's by Platinum. Um, and it gives you a lot more temptation to keep hatching because the hatching is much more subtle. It means you can sort of have a bit of fun with all these shadows and things going on. Even where this again, this roof, I hope, uh, I don't think it's too bad. I, th I think I should just add a, a bit here to give it an angle. Um, my initial shape there is in completely the wrong proportions to make it make sense compared to the reference but that is the joy of being an artist you get to just make up whatever you want um, to correct and claim you meant it under here a little bit of hatching as well and I'll also take some canvas opinions on uh, how much kind of color do you think we should be adding here and what kind of colors it's quite a murky day, if you see. It was a photo. I actually took this photo yesterday. I think it was very windy and murky. Um, and what? Yeah. What kind of colours would you guys add? Realistic, or just a few touches here and there? Or uh, I'm not decided yet. For me, the more pen that you add, the less um, colour I end up adding. It just doesn't make sense anymore. Uh, well, I see that I've got this wrong as well. <laughs> this car's going to crash, isn't it? And got a question from Elizabeth. You never start with a thumbnail sketch. Um, I do start with a thumbnail sketch if the drawing is important to me or if it's scary. Um, Perhaps today, because I wasn't this. This to me feels like a safe image, but I was sketching it from an awkward angle at the beginning, not off my phone. Perhaps that would have been a good reason to start a thumbnail sketch. Um, but no, normally, normally, if I'm just sketching, I don't do a thumbnail, and I don't do them for videos because maybe incorrectly, I feel like people don't want to. Um, to see that bit a lot of the time, but I, I may be wrong about that. Um, but if it feels like a safe scene to me, I just jump in and see what happens. Uh, if I'm outside, I almost always start with a thumbnail sketch. And Mig, stumbled on this channel a couple of weeks ago, been ins inspired to start sketching. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, uh, have fun with your watercolours. And I always say you can email me if you have any questions, very happy to, to answer. Um, especially if people are looking to get started. I think it's a great place to be. And is there something else I missed as well? Um, on holiday, missing your art implements. Uh, it's nice to have a break sometimes as well, though. Um, so uh, I forgot. No, I didn't forget my art implements when we went away on holiday the other week. I just forgot my brushes and my pens. I had everything else, uh, so I could <laughs> couldn't actually do anything. I didn't have my uh, uh, ability to mark with my watercolors; just uh, carry them around. But it's actually quite nice having a few days where I couldn't do the normal thing. And Dean's wanting a dog um, <laughs> who can sit still whilst out sketching. Uh, good luck. I'm sure there are dogs out there like that, but um, uh, good luck is what I'll say. I think some of the smaller breeds and the calmer breeds will be fine. My grandma's got a lovely King Charles Spaniel who would most certainly sit still whilst whilst sketching. But um, So you just have to pick your breed well if that's a key part of um, what you'd like. I think that's certainly enough done now. Probably, possibly even too much, but we'll see. And with that, I'm just going to jump into the colours. Um, so I'm going to squeeze a bit. This is a hematite genuine, and I did try it out. Um, I've got a dot card. You can get for Daniel Smith. You can get dot cards 
for 20, 25 pounds. I imagine similar number of dollars, maybe of some fewer dollars because they're from America. Um, and you can paint quite a lot with the dots they give you and you get 250 odd colors. So if you are interested in looking at those kind of paints, all the major brands do dot cards. It's worth having a look into. Um, I did try this one out and I rather liked it. Um, so we will see how it performs in reality. And I'm going to start by using it and just see what happens. Never used it in a painting before, just swatched it. And uh, I seem to remember it created some nice moody, slightly off red granulations. And we'll see if that's a good memory or if I totally invented that. So it's, it's, a, it's a dark color but it heavily granulates and we'll see if it has uh, any underlying pigment as well or not. It may just be a really dark, almost like a, uh, a slightly more subtle lunar black looking in it there. I'm not sure if anyone else can detect a ray of color coming through it. Uh, I'm just going to get some texture in the sky and then it's not totally overcast. So we're not just going to do a, an angry black sky but with a new color it's always for me fun to just see how it feels on its own how it responds on its own and it's creating some really lovely textures i do sense some warmth under there i may be wrong but i do sense there's some some warmth under there i'm gonna come back in and use some of the normal things so um a bit of mayan blue and a bit of cobalt blue to just like lift that a little bit, make it a little bit more um, unangry, unmoody. Just a few touches. Maybe even it's cobalt turquoise. Hopefully that gets the kind of mood across. We'll see. And I could just move, I think just getting a bit more movement of water through there as well. It's important not to do too much in the sky and especially when it's dried um so there's a in in the courses i run for example we do a, a few uh skies and the biggest problem i see people having with skies is that they don't quite go right which is fine but then after it's dried we try and correct that and then that ends up not being so fine because when you correct it you end up with layers and Mary, very new. What do you mean by paint being granulated? So, can you see in this area, not sure how easy it is to see or not, but in this area, the paint has lots of little dots and that's literally that the paint pigments are quite large and so they settle and you end up, instead of having a smooth color, so if I do just a little swatch up here, that's indigo, which will be relatively smooth versus a granulating color, which you can see a lot of white and you can see a lot of like sandy texture. So hopefully you can see the difference there. That's, that's what granulating means. A <laughs> big cup. It's actually a, a, a pie dish. Um, but I was getting, I was using the um, Faber-Castell Clippy Cups for a while. I normally use like an old peanut butter jar or like gherkin jar or something. But I've been using the Faber-Castell Cl Clippy Cups. But um, because they're made of plastic, what I was finding was happening was um, they were like staining and that like forming almost a slime, which was really awkward to uh, wash off. And so I decided to go back to ceramic. So I've got, I actually used a, picked out a pie dish, which we never use from the kitchen. Um, and I know it's safe to use because I do all the cooking at home and I know that I never use this. So I decided that it would be better used as a really big water pot. So yeah, close. Not, it's not exactly a, um, a uh, cuppa, but it's a, uh, definitely from the kitchen. Now, in my uh, search for moody colours, I'm definitely getting them. The, uh, the I can't remember what it's called, the hematite. 
is interesting. I think I prefer it on its own rather than in these mixes. Um, it, I don't know, it's not muddy, but it's busy. And I think um, sometimes that busyness takes away a little bit. So we'll see, um, but it's worth the experiment. And I've got loads more to experiment with as well. So <laughs> need to get started and just go for it. Hopefully these like crisp, um, these crisp colors, these like quinacridones and things will, will lift it a bit. And I might even just try doubling down on my hematite and just see if that pushes away some of the other color. So when you drop in colors, the, the more dense pigments will push out and they will literally push away other colors. So you can clarify colors. If things are feeling overworked, as long as it's still wet, you can clarify colors quite a lot just by touching in colors. That becomes really obvious if I touch in a bit of blue, for example, the cobalt should push away and you'll get this kind of clear area of blue in theory. Um, and just have a bit of a play with some of these colours. Getting a bit mucky there. I want a nice kind of warm quinacridone just to get this idea of reflection. It's not um, a rainy day, but I'm sort of, I think I've decided it's a rainy day, if you know what I mean. And um, trying to get that feeling of like wet and reflective colours coming down. Here we go, I can see some tips in there about what people use. So uh, metal porcelain meat tray. That's a good idea. I imagine that to be enormous. Is it enormous or is that um, more manageable than it sounds? I did, my favorite thing I've used is, is one of the giant, you can get these like kilo tubs of peanut butter, um, which I love peanut butter, so that works for me. And then also being able to use it after. Um, it was just huge and full of water, but it got um, got cleaned uh, by Tash, removed um, without permission. <laughs> so uh, waiting to buy another giant thing of peanut butter. And in the meantime, sort of making do. Adding a bit of red in here. So this is Scarlet Lake I'm using. I'm gonna start experimenting soon with um, uh, organic vermilion which is from Daniel Smith and is the same pigment as Scarlet Lake. Scarlet Lake is a quinacridone colour. Lots of colours are the same in different or sorry let's try that on again. In different brands lots of pigments will be used but called different things and lots of colours will be called the same thing um, but actually they're different pigments and lots of pigments which are the same and called the same thing will actually look very different because of the formulation. So colours between brands are rather unreliable. So I'm, I'm interested to see whether organic vermilion will be an effective swap for me or not. Hope, yeah, well, I, I think I hope it is because it's, uh, it'd be nice to just solidify my palette all from one brand, just makes shopping a bit easier. Um, but at the same time, it'd just be fun to see. With this very loose feel, um, I think this whole mood actually was set by that hematite. So using this, this very granulating colour at the beginning has set this whole like, I um, don't know how to describe the mood of this really, but it's slightly Halloween-y. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. But it's slightly um, disturbing mood, I would say. It doesn't quite feel like a real place. Um, and I think that was all set by that, that sky. Possibly as well the the Mayan blue which I used at the beginning. So that's this colour. That's like a, a sort of deep turquoise. And that can give sometimes give the feel of just like not being uh, not being quite real, but one way or another it's happened. And we just roll with it and see what happens if we continue. Like that's my uh, my version of how to do it. Just getting a few touches of red along, along chimneys and things like that. Probably almost ready to call this first layer done. And then I think it's going to be a case of seeing what happens with a little bit more pen and then seeing what happens if we need any more ink. Um, vintage grainy look. There you go. Maybe that's what I'm after. That kind of vintage feel, yeah. 
slightly busy. I'm not sure. I like the I like granulation, but I think uh, perhaps not when there's this much going on. Maybe just pulling all the shadows down here didn't work so well. I'm not sure. Um, but you don't know until you've tried. Just talking about that. I also feel there's a bit of disconnect. I normally like to connect the sky and the the scene. Maybe I should just connect through here. Maybe that will um, make me feel better about it as well. So. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right, with that, I'm going to just mute and uh, I'm going to air, uh, hair dry this. And you'll be able to see that hair drying things is not a good idea because hair drying things really does flatten it. Um, and we'll see how much that's the case here because this granulation may actually stay because of how heavy it is. But when you hair dry, because it pushes the pigment around, it just mixes it and a lot of your textures will disappear. And there we go. It actually shows what I know. It's made some of the textures bolder and it's made some of it flatter. Uh, Alexander, um, yes, you are right. Uh, not Mars Black, but uh, Hematite Genuine, which I thought would have a little bit more of a warm touch, but um, maybe I did my swatching wrong earlier um, because it, it does feel like Luna Black, which is the same as Mars Black in most brands. So Luna Black and Daniel Smith, I think, is the same pigment. Um, and... Manisha, beginner at watercolor and bought the Daniel Smith set with warm and cool primaries. Struggle with mixing colors. Uh, if you were in my place and add two other colors, which would they be? Um, I would add like a, a brown, an umber burnt sienna, and a dark, like a Payne's gray and indigo, something like that. That will give you a lot more um, uh, variety in your sketching, I think. Um, Judith loves it, which is great. How do you use granulation to your advantage, says Madeline, um, for textures? Um, yeah, basically for textures. So granulation is a bit of a... Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, it's... Basically, for me, it adds a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of drama very quickly. Um, and as long as you don't overdo it, it, I think it's an amazing effect, especially in abstract scenes in scenes where there's not so much line, in scenes which are about the nature because it gives that kind of natural feel. Um, so yeah, I just I think it's just one more thing which is fairly unique to watercolour and quite fun to play with more than anything. Um, and Alexander, no no apology necessary. I think you're right that it's this, it's called Mars Black in other, other brands. leave your brushes in your in your water um i have not had problems with my brushes leaving them in water um it is i don't use expensive brushes um i probably wouldn't do that with if i was doing watercolor painting which i differentiate from this this is line and wash and the wash is very loose if I'm doing watercolour painting and using nicer brushes, because you need a bit more control, so often you'll have just, literally they are brushes which are more controlled, nicer, more expensive, then I would be more careful about doing this. Um, but uh, I'm also, you can probably tell from the speed that I sketch that I have a very low attention span, and I know myself, and I know that... Um, However hard I try, when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm just going to be forgetting about these brushes. So I don't really try to take them out. And I just accept that I'll be happier leaving them in. And um, and if something bad happens, well, that's okay. Um, but otherwise I just stress myself out. 
So I don't know if that's a good reason to do it or not. But no, I've not actually had any problems. But I don't. I use mostly synthetic brushes for price and personal like thoughts about the ethics of animal brushes and just not really knowing enough about how different animal brushes are harvested. Um, so I feel more comfortable using them. And I think synthetic brushes, it's just nylon. It stands up pretty well. Just trying to bring some stuff forward really with some bolder lines to get it in, you know, with all that texture that some of the lines have been lost. Um, just get so busy. So I've, I swapped to an extra fine instead of ultra extra fine and seeing what happens just with a few bold lines. And I'm probably going to blacken some of these windows as well. Again, just because this will simplify it. I know I hatched some of them painstakingly, but um, I just want to simplify some of this image to uh, sort of bring it back a little bit. So just blacking in is one way of doing that for me. It creates some contrast and drama as well, which is nice, but um, today the reason for doing it is to make this image feel a little more simple. And Dean, thank you. Thank you for the compliments about this. I think it's all right. I. Uh, it's not going. It's not. It's not what I. I think. I think it's what I planned in my head, um, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and it's definitely got um, a punch of character going on for sure. There's this sign I want to remember to. I wanted to pop a little bit of colour on. Might make it feel a bit more busy with some people in the back as well. I think. Just having a few more little marks around might actually, having simplified things, might explain some of the busyness, if that makes sense as a concept. So just doing really simple people. Forgive the crashing car and van. Then I wonder what, I wonder what to do else if there is anything else to do. Maybe a few more touches of bold colour. Maybe something like that. So, with that in mind, let's get some, I think there's two things which could be lifted, a bit of red and a bit of cobalt. Um, so I might just create some really punchy touches of these colours. Just in a few places, kind of almost using it as a shadow in places. Oh, accidental splash of red there. Let's see if I can explain that with just a little wash. <laughs> there you go. These br I'm going to make the excuse. These brushes have got quite a long handle compared to what I'm used to. So I think my uh, didn't realise how close my brush was to uh, impact there. And of course, I quite like doing little lines on the road. I know it's a bit twee, but it makes me happy. So few lines on the road, touch of yellow on the traffic lights, maybe glow in some of the windows, and then a little bit of cobalt blue. So of course some of the cobalt blue was in these shadows and it's that's something which did get flattened out um, when I used the hairdryer I think. Um, just do some splashes down here. I can blue over here, that will push things into the distance and hopefully not feel like too much. And there we go. Probably call that one done. Don't know what people think. Uh, willing to take suggestions. But yeah, that is, that's my version of, I'll get the scene up again. So you can tell like <laughs> by by the fact my phone's been away for the last few minutes, how little I look at the photo. After I've done the sketch and the first colours, for me it becomes all about um, the scene rather than the scene, as it were. Um, but it, 
it's kind of worked in the end, I think. So we've got feeling of distance down here, done with the blue. We've got the feeling of sort of sh light shadows down here, which I've enhanced a bit. Then we've got the warmth of these walls, all very loose, but um, yeah, seems to be working okay. Nothing twee about double yellows. <laughs> Now something I've, I'm not sure it's going to work in this, but something I've been wanting to play with is um, adding some Poscas, some Posca lines. There's already a lot of lines going on here, um, but uh, I, I'd really like to add like not just white Posca lines, which I know I've, I've used a lot in the past, um, but also using the like blues and yellows and um, creating a, a bit of line work like that. So maybe for the last thing of this stream, if I could just remove this, I can just do something different where we can try incorporating some of those. So maybe instead of doing a scene this time, we'll just do something from the imagination. So I'm just going to put some shapes in, maybe have like a simple one point perspective scene. So something like that as a starting point. And this is where we can just be really loose and just imagine what might be going on in our little scene. Make it quite a steep perspective. And then have something maybe flat on the other side. So uh, like a church coming across or something like that. Really narrow street. And if the street curves around there then we can have something else flat in the distance. When I say flat, I'm talking about having um, flat uh, perspective. So that's a little bit high. So we're looking at the head level, which is the horizon level. So in theory, the pavement should never be above that, unless there's a slight, a slight slope to the street. And then just make that make a bit of sense. This can all be a town centre, so all of this can have kind of a shop front. This is going to be a church, so make a nice tall tower, a clock tower. I imagine there are people watching much better at sketching from the imagination than I am. Um, I, whenever I do it, I'm basically pulling on memories um, and then shapes, so um, ideas or that I've sketched before um, and then understanding hopefully of perspective and then fitting shapes in around that to make it feel a bit more alive. I wonder, does anyone out there sketch much from the imagination and therefore able to explain how they do it. Is it the same way? Is it from, you know, is it actually not really from the imagination, but from memory? Or I might, there must be people who are actually inventive and creative and can, can really just do imaginary sketches and make them make sense. For me, uh, it's definitely, definitely a, a, a challenge, I've got to say. Add in a few people. And then we can always have some textures. We can do some bricks and things. And make the tops of these a bit more interesting. Add in some of those like bay windows coming out the top. Same here, little suggestions of something going on. I kind of want to finish the image there and there. So maybe a framing suggestion of a tree or something and over here we can have a lamp post that will frame it there we go and if we've got one lamp post we can have more going down and more in the distance and like so hello betty indeed so i imagine everyone heard her getting up and then discovering the door was shut and then going back to bed again my water's a little bit pink but I think it's not too pink, so for a nice loose sketch, we, we should still be able to just come in and pop in these colours. Uh, 
And there we go. A few splashes. Get some texture in there. We're just touching in that colour. Lots of water on there. Um, so it's moving very quickly. Then I like pulling down the shadow. So the shadow is going to be in the back of this scene. And the shadow can have a blue tinge. We'll use a little bit of that hematite genuine. But I've learnt my lesson about how uh, pigmented it is. Maybe let's get something else. Perlin violet in. That's quite a nice colour for an abstract scene. It also works quite well on churches with a touch of yellow and sometimes a touch of blue it ends up making quite a nice neutralish kind of brick colour and then just vary that a bit to get a bit more of the quinacridone and what else do I want to actually colour the aim of this create a really quick sketch and then see what happens if we add a bit of Posca pen line work and who knows, because I've never done it before, apart from using, like I said, using the white highlights. So I'm also willing to take tips on that. I've gone back to the uh, the Twisby. Yeah, um, I just, I didn't actually think about it. I think I just had the Twisby in my hand. Um, it is, uh, it, it has a much better flow of ink. So if we're doing something really quick like this, the, the Twisby's uh, much better. Um, so that's, I mean, I probably would have chosen it, but I, I didn't make a conscious choice. The platinum is very good for really neat, specific lines. Flowers, trees, some landscapes, some puppies from imagination. Is it your puppies then, though? Uh, it's your puppies, though. So it's still not really from your imagination. It's from your, like, memories, I guess. I'm putting words into your mouth. The only things I can sketch from imagination are horses. <laughs> so that's kind of like constructional drawing which I've never been good at um when eventually I get I'm doing I am making the so anyone on my mailing list will or may know I did a little um sort of uh, competition for a free year of Skillshare and the, the winner basically suggested a uh, YouTube tutorial on sketching dogs and within that tutorial which is being created um uh there is a bit about um, sort of constructional techniques and you can see how awful I am at constructional techniques of drawing as well, which will be exciting, I'm sure. Um, but there is a bit about that. But I'm, I've just never been good at constructional drawing. So um, a constructional drawing is, if you know, for people who don't know or for the likelihood that I'm using the term wrong and therefore people aren't knowing what I'm on about, is where you sort of... Uh, build objects within boxes or within mannequins so instead of having to visualize something you can be aware of its proportions you can draw boxes and then draw the person within that box that's the kind of idea now this is going okay I just this has gone too bold that's some indigo which is just too much so I'm going to just pull out a bit drop in a bit of um, cobalt blue and I better leave it there because I'm going to make it really busy again otherwise so I'm just going to quickly mute and hair dry this and then we'll try some Posca pens and see what happens And there we are. So my ideas for Posca pen will be to use just two or three colours, which are probably already in there. So why not a yellow? I want the black and I want this light blue. And I'll probably get out the red as well. So then we've got primary colours and black. Um, and I'm going to use this in place of what I would normally do coming back in with ink, at least initially, but in a more controlled way. Because um, these lines will be very bold. Um, just waiting for the pen to find its acrylic in it. Um, but my idea is to create sort of texture, a bit more texture in front of the 
um, in front of the picture, sort of, you know, this is acrylic paint, so it should stand up, it should literally feel like it has texture. This is taking forever to start. There we go. So it's an extra fine as well, so it's 0 0.7. Um, and what I want to do is kind of just find some of the, what I'm going to call key features, um, which may bewilder people who don't think a couple of uh, lamps are key features, but there you go. That's how my brain works. So the, the lamps, for example, can jump forward and maybe just add another street light here. Not too fast, that page is a bit wet there. And maybe just highlight a few bits. It does actually draw much more fine than I was imagining. I think my um, white ones always got a bit damaged, so they ended up uh, not really being as fine as they might be. I feel like the people can come, really come forward as well. And maybe just a few touches like this. And then we get some other things which can maybe have some uh, traffic light type things. More people. Betty's up again, I think she might start making out a fuss about wanting to leave the room. Clearly bored of my, uh, my wittering. Quite right too. Going to try now just a, a lighter colour. So that wasn't too clever really, that's just um, me, you know, doing what I'd normally do with a pen. Um, the, the width is a 0.7 Madeline, 0.7 millimetre. Um, so quite bold, but uh, actually a lot more controlled than I was imagining. The inspiration for this is I saw a couple of really nice things on um, Instagram actually, which I failed to save, so I can't find them again. Um, but it was someone using what, well, I, I interpreted the lines they'd made as being with something like a Posca pen, whether I'm right or not. Um, but it had a really lovely uh, layered feel to it. It felt like you had this, she probably had less ink um, than I've done, but then a lot of the structure was coming. So like the houses weren't outlined in black, they were outlined in other colors. So here like I can outline these houses in yellow and the, the because this is uh, opaque, so actually the yellow can cover up the black to some extent. Um, so you can actually come and make highlights, you can come and correct things, you can block in and uh, create really bold areas. And it will, because again it's opaque, acrylic is opaque, it will sit in front of watercolours. Whereas in watercolours you never really get that in front effect because they are transparent. The only time you get an in front effect is when you've really overdone it and your colours are all muddy. And then you've lost your watercolours. you just sort of created mud on the page unfortunately. Which happens to everyone, like me in the last, um, not that I'm necessarily the best example, but it did happen to me in the last sketch we're doing. So, um, yeah, that's the idea. It's just, it, it's got another, another something you can add. I think that's probably enough of that for now. Alan, you tend to have too much ink or acrylic pouring out. Um, me too. So I'm surprised this, well, I, I either have the problem that loads comes out, or nothing comes out and then you try it hard and you activate it off to the side of your page and suddenly everything comes out again. Um, so yeah, this is a definitely an experiment. I don't know, what, what do people think? How do you feel about the kind of, what's, what's happening in front of the watercolors? I'm gonna be definitely experimenting on my own with these for a bit because I really like the idea um, of what what could be achieved. My mum actually has this um, really lovely painting um, hung up in the living room, uh, which is just uh, like a, a balcony in no perspective. Um, it looks like a kind of a scene from Italy somewhere. 
there's like a, bi a bike on the balcony and all the lines, all the black lines of the balcony railings and the bike are in, it looks like almost pouring acrylic, like really thick acrylic. So you have this huge texture running through the whole piece. I really like that. I've always wanted to think of a way of doing that. So this is my attempt at uh, first steps at trying to incorporate that kind of idea. We'll see. Looking for an alternative to the Poskas. I've never found a good alternative to the Poskas. There are good alternatives which I use. So when I do acrylic painting, I do a weird kind of line and wash version of acrylic painting. And I quite like using, the brand begins with M. I can't remember, Mo Moscow or something, I don't know. Um, but uh, I quite like using that brand um, for uh, doing like bold line work. It doesn't work here because they're really th chunky markers. It works great on a really big canvas. But yeah, on this it would just be way too much. So I'm just going to do, don't want to do too much with this red. I think it will overpower. There's no red in the watercolour. But I had it out, so I thought we'll try it. Maybe people's hands can be red as well. That's, again, like, I quite like these kind of silly illustrative touches. So you've got like themes running through. All your people have got red head, red hands. Um, and then I'm going to go back to the black. And just bring, now that we've done that, I can sort of structure some again. Some of this line work can get a bit more structure. So like where the blues and yellows are, can sort of enhance it, hopefully enhance it with a bit of black. That is the plan. I mean, this uh, this church spire is quite a weak bit of imagination now that I look at it again, isn't it? That's very bland and boring. I've just drawn a, like a rocket ship going up, but never mind. <laughs> Next time, Next time I'll have to have some better things in my mind. I think maybe even just introducing a bit of something to the side might make it better. <laughs> there we go. So a bit more structure here, I think. Know, how's that feeling to people? Good idea, bad idea, good idea, badly done, bad idea, goodly done. <laughs> I quite like it actually. I think um, for a first exploratory attempt, it's definitely got something to it. Oh, Yono, okay, that's interesting. I have to have a look at that. Thin these lines are. So these are these are 0.7 mil Poskas, Madeline. I'm going to get my my white one out. Yes, yeah, so this is my white one, which is also 0.7. I'm just going to have a go with it because maybe it really is the same thin thinness. But what, what happens, I don't know if you can see, this has all got gummed up. Um, and then when that gets all gummed up, you can no longer easily get a clear line. Um, because the paint just pulls and blobs and comes out. So just trying to clean up that. And let's see if that makes a difference. I don't know if you can see, but what, what's happening is it's like blobbing out. Might be obvious if I come and damage my painting. Yeah, so it's, it's not drawing very well. If I come off to the side, I get this big blob. I don't know if that's because I've left my pen too long, but it that's been my experience of using them before. So maybe I'll find out more in this kind of experiment, whether this blobbing effect um, just happens again and again. Gonna do some windows in the back. Now that I've got it out, I'm gonna do some windows in the back. 
maybe look into the other ideas that people are giving out in the comments. So there you go, that's an example. It's really like, I can't get a line, but if I press, it come, it's coming out, giving a nice big blob of paint. Okay. The other thing I wanted to do is get some like, uh, some nice wires going through the scene using these. So the idea of having these like telephone wires like looping back and forth. Um, they need to link to something. So let's have a telephone pole here. There we go. We can call that a mistake later, but for now, it's a route to experimentation. So it's that like busyness of line, which I find really interesting with this. Yeah, probably too much, but good fun. So I'm going to keep going. A little bit of blue as well. And when too much has already been done, there's no harm in doing even more. So a little bit of yellow. Let's get our double yellows, which I've been reliably informed are not twee. Get the yellow on the traffic lights. There we go. Let's call this uh, Descent Into Madness done. I actually quite like it. It's, um, I do like the effect. Um, and it is similar to what I was hoping to achieve because it's similar to what I saw being achieved on uh, Instagram by the very talented person who, I can't tell you who they are, um, but if I find them again, I'll make sure to, uh, to share something on Instagram so people can actually see it as well. And I like the idea, so I'm going to keep experimenting with that. I, I like, this is the kind of effect I was going for actually in the distance, where you use very soft, soft watercolours, and then the colour of line gives this idea of structure. Perhaps what I need to do in the future is less ink, so that there's less initial structure. Maybe even do like direct watercolour type painting, or use a bit of pencil marks first to make it a bit more accurate. Um, but I like the, the possibilities here. Um, are exciting. So expect to see more of these in some form or other um, in probably after Inktober, but uh, after Inktober, hopefully I've got to grips with them and we'll see what happens. And with that, I'm going to say bye bye. Thank you everyone for watching. A uh, couple of sketches, a um, couple of things to try out. Uh, I better change the thumbnail because it implies it's going to be by Inktober, which it was, but then I I just did too much ink stuff and I didn't I didn't think I could come here and actually do more ink sketching and sound enthusiastic. But you will get hopefully some more enthusiastic ink sketching coming up. Um there'll be some I I have this vague aim to do a daily um Inktober video. Uh it's very unrealistic that I'll manage to do that. Um but there's that vague aim. So look out for more videos than normal. Um and then let's see what happens. Anyway, uh, happy sketching everyone and enjoy the rest of your weekend.